So, a uh, bit of a long overdue video update. Sorry about the shakiness and the quality, but uh, anyhow, um, things are ugly in here as I've done a pretty major change. Uh, I got the triple head to go uh, just hooked up. You can see the mess of wires over there. Uh, I got the digital edition, three new, I think they're gateway, 22 inch monitors. I'm pretty sure the quality will not come across on here, but I am super happy with this. This this is entirely different to fly with. It's not even in the same ballpark. So, uh, as you know, I was running one monitor before for basic testing. So I had to uh, I rigged up a shelf. Um, this is only temporary. I think I'm going to build a proper enclosure and some shelving for the, all the PCs, so this doesn't have to be along the wall. But this was the uh, the summertime version. Uh, winter, I can spend some time on fixing it up. Uh, all in all, the move of the sim went pretty well. I didn't have too many issues, although I'm noticing that my first officer's side bezels are not functioning. I don't know what happened. I'll have to dig in. Unfortunately, with this against the wall, it makes it a little trickier for troubleshooting. But uh, I don't think it'll be a big deal. Um, yeah, everything booted back up, still running the SciTech panels. Uh, I did update the SPAD driver for those. It works ten times better than the other ones. It just came out about a month ago. Uh, I got some runway incursion enunciators. I think I posted on, jet, on a Hangar 45 on the FSRAAS, I believe. And uh, it announces when you're entering or leaving a runway. Um, uh, short runway, various other callouts that works well with my TCAS callouts, along with PM Sounds running on multiple computers. I've, uh, uh, this one running some speakers that I need to move behind me, uh, speakers behind those monitors, and then another set way over in the corner that are uh, Jet 45 and PM Sounds only. But uh, yep, I haven't hooked the lighting back up for my bezels. I uh, just haven't gotten that far yet. I wanted to check and see if the sim was flyable. Uh, I had some issues with the uh, install of the triple head. Um, then I remembered, do not use anything but the cabling that comes with the triple head. It will not work. Once I installed the factory cable, they fired right up, and I just had to kind of mess with my FSX and my A. I'm running an ATI. Uh, graphics card, so I had to mess with that a little bit to get the get the settings somewhat happy. And uh, as you can see, computers are still updating. This is about the fourth round. It's been so long since I had the sim even fired up. All of them need to do update numerous times. So uh, not a big deal because I'm not doing any proper flying. Um, USB ports and stuff. I need to I'm all out of space on my hub rigged this up before the move. I have uh, FSX voice coming through a USB audio uh, sound card. It's just a USB dongle with headphone outs and works really really great for that and then when I want to I just move it over to uh, my console PC when I want to run Spock Box and I do essentially the same deal. I uh, don't need uh, FSX ATC when Squawk Box is being used, obviously. But, uh, yeah. Um, had to up update FS UIPC because the runway incursion needed it to work. Uh, that so far went good, but I have not updated the, uh, the wide clients yet on these other PCs. Uh, just because I, I can't easily see the displays. I don't have remote desktop set up, but I've been using TeamViewer for all my other computers, and I just need to get it installed on there. And that will lead to the final one, which will be the Jet 45 update, and I'm, I'm really excited to get that done. I, I saw the list that uh, Eric Tomlin posted on the items updated, and it's uh, almost staggering. They're, they've done a lot of work with it all the uh, the known issues and uh, quite a pile that were not uh, publicly known issues or even issues they're just uh, uh, nice to have updates so that's going to be great um, and then the last thing I'm debating I did download uh, Rex Essentials I'm still running Real Environment Extreme with the standalone uh, weather system over here 
I'd like to try it. it. There's good talks on it. I'm just not sure whether I'll bother when the overdrive is coming really soon. Um, so far, my weather works pretty good. Jesus, it looks bad on this iPad. <laughs> I assure you, these monitors look a lot better than that. I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy. It's actually pretty neat flying at night. I can now see aircraft at uh, well, 30 miles plus away. Just The sheer resolution change is incredible. And actually, I can go higher yet. I found some posts saying that we can get higher resolution than what these are running now. They're in the, the 3000, top end of the 3000 range. Uh, there is posts saying you can get 5000 and, and FSX gets along with it. So I may go that far, but uh, no rush. Um, yeah, so far, uh, had a buddy over the other day and gave it a spin. And, uh, pretty enjoyable so far, uh, liking what it can do. and. It's back to being smooth after uh, a little bit of tweaking on the ATI. Uh, initially, I didn't have the FSX screen resolution cranked back up because I concentrated on everything else, and it ran like a dog. It was it was horrible. It chopped and stuttered and carried on like I was running it off of a 386. But once I cranked that up, worked with the uh, anti-aliasing a little bit. I can't run that wide open for some reason, but. Uh, I'll figure it out. Um, yeah, that's pretty much a walkthrough of everything. I just have a random flight queued up. I think we're about 43,000 feet, just sort of cruising a long way off flight plan here. I just, uh, yeah, I'm way the heck down, <laughs> down the east coast. Long way from where I should be. That's what happens when you get playing with stuff, so. Pretty eager to get Jet 45 updated and uh, give a few more things a try, and then back to some interfacing. Uh, thanks for watching.